Does the title ring any bells with, with anyone? Have you ever, ever heard that phrase before, the road less travelled? Um, it, it's well known uh, in the sense that in 1978, um, a psychiatrist, M. Scott Peck, wrote a book called The Road Less Travelled. He, he was a psychiatrist, uh, so he was dealing with broken people as part of his daily life. He also lived his life on Christian principles. But he, in turn, took the title of his book from a poem. Uh, the poem was written 107 years ago by uh, an American poet, Robert Frost. I'm going to read the poem to you. Let me just tell you that the, the thrust of the poem is in the very last line. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, or just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Now as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in the wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by. And that has made all the difference. It's that last line that makes you realise it's not just about two paths diverging in a wood. What difference would one path make against another? But when you think of the path of life that you're taking, the, the decisions that we have to make every day, some small decisions, some large decisions, and that can make all the difference on the path that you're going to take. We're going to have a reading now, you've not had a chance to fall asleep, Andrew. This is really good. <laughs> We're going to have the reading now. And this is about advice to a child. He's remembering the advice he's been given by his father. We said that the poem is 107 years old. Well, this writing is far, far older, well, well before the Roman Empire was even thought of, or the Greek Empire was thought of, or the Medo-Persian or the Babylonian Empire thought of. This is 950 BC, round about. So nearly 3,000 years old. And yet with the reading, I want you to think how modern this is. Think of your children today, the difficulties that they have, the violence that they face, knife crime, it's become the scourge of the society in which we live. So come on, Andrew, it's Proverbs chapter four. Proverbs chapter four. Mm -hmm. 
Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands and live, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honour when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they've done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Thank you, Andrew. What is it? Verse seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, get understanding. <laughs> What's wisdom? Think about wisdom. How would you define wisdom? Now, if I were to ask you, what's your understanding of the word wisdom? Well, I thought quite long and hard about this. If I were to give my answer, it would be, it's the ability to make the right choice. So, what else do you need to be able to make the right choice? You need knowledge. There's wisdom and there's wisdom. Okay, the Apostle Paul talks about himself like being a wise master builder. You can have a wise builder. It's nothing to do with his way of life. It's just that he knows the right choices to make in building a, a house. He's got a knowledge, a good knowledge, and he can choose. So say, for example, Silly example. You're a workman and you're going to buy a van. What's the wise choice? There's lots of vans out there. What's the wise choice? To be able to make the wise choice, 
you have to understand vans. You have to know which have good engines and bad engines, which ones rust away easily and how reliable are they? And once you've got a knowledge, then that knowledge helps you to make the right choice. That's wisdom, in my simple way, that's wisdom. Now, in our reading today, in Proverbs chapter four, we've been looking at advice given to a young man on the best way to go, the best path to take in your life. But Proverbs, <coughs> like all the books in the Bible, has chapters and verses in it. They, they weren't put there until 1300 and something, I believe. So it's really just one writing. So if you just go back to the beginning of the book, just to the very start of Proverbs, and I'll just read that for you. Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man on the understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand the proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and the dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. He puts it a, a, another way. In, uh, in chapter 9, where he says this, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So this isn't talking about a choice of vans. This is talking about the choice of your life, of what life you have. And that's a lot more important than the wisdom of choosing a van. How do we make that right choice? Just sit and think for a moment. You are, you're on your own. We are all very different. We're all very separate. Each one of you and myself, I am a product. I am a product physically of how my parents were, but I'm a product of what I put into my body. That's how I am now of what's gone into me. Mentally, I'm a product <coughs> of all the experiences that I've had, all the things that I've learned or not learned. And that's what makes me as I am now. And you can't change that. That, that stamped. You, you might be able to, to look at some things that you might regret doing and go and try and mitigate some of them, but you are as you are now. There's no changing that. But the future, the future is down to you. The future is open. 
You, you can go on several ways. And it's you that chooses. There's nobody else responsible. We are all responsible for ourselves. I can't blame anybody else for the path that I now decide to take in life. That's all common sense, isn't it? We might not think about that all the time, but I can't change the past. But the future, that's completely open. That's a blank page. And we can choose how we're going to go in the future. So, which way are we going to go? Do you know, there was another wise man called Jeremiah, and he wrote this. This is what you're thinking, which path you're going to take. He says, I know, O oh Lord, that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, if we take that on board, <coughs> what we're actually saying is the path is open. I can go whichever way I choose. But I recognize that in me, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know what's the right way to take or the right path to tread. I don't have that wisdom, but God does. And we're so well blessed that the Lord God has shown us the path to take. It's very clear. And then, so what we're given is a map into our hand on the path to take to life. You can disregard it if you wish. And that path is given us in the form of God's Son. Jesus was a genius. You get geniuses in this world, you get genius musicians, you get genius mathematicians. Jesus was a very special genius in that he knew the path to tread. He, more than anybody else, knew the mind of God. And those problems that beset us on what actually is the right way to go Jesus could, could answer them. It didn't make life any easier for him because he was still tempted to go my way, to go his own way. And that is a very different path than the path that God who knows us, who created us, knows is best for us to take. Jesus understands God's mind. He understood God's, and, and still does, God's ways. And the point is, he chose to live a life that was God's way. And he lived his life and died living that way. Have a look at a rather unusual situation when I point it out to you. It's in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. Remember, Jesus is just like us. He's walking a path in his life. He's having to choose which way to go at all times. And in Luke 18, verse 18, we get this question asked, Jesus to, asked to Jesus, a certain ruler asked him, saying, good master, 
what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, you and I might be thinking, right, what's the best way? What's the path to take to get to eternal life? That's what he's being asked. And that isn't what Jesus answers. Why callest thou me good? Why are you calling me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Now, if I were to ask you as believers in the Lord Jesus, for those that are here that believe in the work of the Lord Jesus, was Jesus good? Then you would, I'm sure, say, yes, of course he was good. And yet Jesus is saying here that he isn't good. That there isn't anybody good but God. And Jesus doesn't lie. So we have to look at this and say Jesus wasn't good. What Jesus was, Jesus was an arrow in flight. The arrow could go in different ways, the wind could affect it, it might miss the mark. But he's an arrow in flight. That arrow is leading to life, not just for Jesus, but for us too if we choose to follow him. But the arrow hasn't hit the mark. And Jesus is still capable of sin. And because he's capable of sin, he isn't good. It's only when Jesus actually died on the cross in fulfillment of God's word, in accordance with God's direction to him. He had the power to walk down, but that was not the path he took. He took the path that his father had laid down. And it's only at his death that we can truly say Jesus was good. He was perfect. Because once you're dead, you can't change it. He'd taken the right path and he'd reached the right goal. At this time that he's talking to this rich young ruler, there's lots of paths ahead that he could have taken. But on his death, there was no other path left. So he was then perfect. And that's the pathway that is there for us. It's a map that he's given for us. But just like choosing the van, you need to have knowledge. And so we need to have knowledge of that map and to, to look at that map. Just turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Jesus, in, in the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7, are called the Sermon on the Mount. It's a sermon given by Jesus. Instructions, a way of life, a pattern to walk by that is given by Jesus. And he's showing a completely different way of life in chapters 5, 6, and 7. And if we just, sorry, move on to, to um, chapter 7. We're nearing the end of his discourse. Really do read the Sermon on the Mount. You, you'll find it, gosh, can I live like that? But this is, as he's drawing to the conclusion, he says this, verse 12, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. 
for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And it's this that's the road less traveled. It's this pathway that is the way to life, but isn't found by everyone, and takes quite some searching out. So, what I'm urging you to do in this short talk is to take stock of your life. You can't change the past. The future is yours to choose and to be responsible for in that choosing. There's a path to death and a path to life. It's far more important than this choosing of a van or any different aspect of our life. But just as making a wise choice in vans is based on a knowledge of vans, so in choosing your path of life or death is based on your knowledge of the Lord God and the path that he's provided for us through the Lord Jesus. It's too important an issue to ignore. Please, look at God's instruction book that he's given to us. The, the Bible is the only way that we can learn of God. No other way can we learn of the creation of this world, the creation of the universe, the path that God wants us to take, and the joy that is set before us if we just follow in the footsteps of our Lord and our Master on that pathway to eternal life. Please look at it. Thank you.